Alright, hello and welcome to B Services number two. Um, we're going to take uh, the same techniques that we used in the first uh, series or the first session um, with uh, drawing, except this time instead of leaving our cursor where it was, um, and that's what we did the first time, left it exactly where it was. Instead of doing that, today we're actually going to move the cursor around to take our mesh from just a, a two-dimensional um, piece into a three-dimensional piece. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to set up my scene again for you, uh, just like I did in the first one, so that you can be reminded on how to do that. Using Shift and A, I will add a mesh plane. I am going to rotate it to face me, so R, X, 9, 0, enter. I'll tap it uh, with tab into edit mode and scale it way down. I will also move this over to the side and use A to deselect everything. When I open up my end panel, I will create a new layer. Of course, choose my color. It's always fun to choose a fun color. And I'm going to leave it on cursor settings just like we did before. I'm also going to take a moment and I'm going to create a second window on the top here. And I will change this one into a side view. So I will use the number three. And you can see I am at right ortho view. I will hit T to close up that tool panel. I'm also going to use um, my centering with Shift plus C to get the center of my um, grid here. So let me explain just a tiny bit what we're looking at. You really need to uh, know where you sit in your scene uh, to make this a little easier. In this bottom, we are in front view, which means that the green axis is basically coming out the center of our nose and going into the screen. Here, with the right side view, you can see the front of it is coming along the green, so we are looking at it on the right side. So if we were to, we could just put a little face here. There's its nose, mouth. Okay, so its eyesight is going down this way. Do you see that? And I'm a terrible drawer. We don't pick on the teacher's drawings. We just don't do it. Okay, so um, this is where you're sitting. You're sitting at this end and drawing at this distance away from you. Uh, in here, of course, we only see what we're looking at. We don't really see how far away from us it is. And so that's why we have this window, so that we can do that. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm going to hold down my D key and I am going to draw a line from left to right and if I turn this screen around you see it is at the cursor point right well let me go back into front view here and now I'm going to use my left mouse to click a little further back on the axis here the Y axis and what that does is even though we can't see it in this bottom window, we can see that we've moved it a little further away from us. Now if we draw another line, so let's just make this one a little wavy, alright? We make that line, although it looks like it's in the same place, because we moved the cursor back and we're drawing where the cursor is, these two are nowhere near touching. So let's go ahead and do that a little bit more. I'm going to move my cursor back and I will use my D and I will draw another line. Move my cursor back and draw another back and let's draw the final one. These ones I also started all at the same side. So remember that what I said before, you have to draw them beginning where you want them and ending where you want them. All the beginnings will um, match up and uh, be connected. The same with the bottom. So now when I go ahead into my tools here and I turn off loops on strokes, add surface, you'll see that I get a surface that's very 3D now. 
so we can begin to start making more shapes and they don't all have to be completely flat surfaces. Again, it's all going to be dependent on where your cursor is. So, um, you know, we could do all kinds of fun things with this, but let's just say that almost looks like maybe something you might use as a terrain, <laughs> but uh, let your imagination go wild on you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of this. Uh, make sure that I turn my clue off and everyone should know what that is. Delete and recenter my cursor with Shift and C in both windows and line them back up. Uh, what I'm going to do in this next one is talk a little bit about circles because you can do circles as well. Uh, for this one, I'm going to make a second window on this side. I will close the T panel, so hit T to close the tool shelf. And this one, um, I'm going to leave in front ortho. Again, I'm looking into the scene. The Z axis is going uh, bottom to top, and that's the one that we're actually going to be working along. But I want to draw cylinder uh, shapes. So in this first window, not being in front ortho is, well, being in front ortho is not going to help. So I'm going to hit 7 and go into top view. All right. Now, when we drew circle, draw circles, it's important to remember that these as well need to go in the direction that you mean for them to go in. Otherwise, they could get twisted around. So I'm going to use my D, and I will start drawing a circle. And let's just say that I draw something like that. And I'm not going to touch these. Not that touching would do anything other than mess you up. Um, we have a choice, uh, an option here that we can use in a minute, but uh, you don't need these to touch. It's not something that has to happen. I'm going to go ahead, and you can see that this is drawn basically at ground level along the Z axis. So if I use my mouse and I bring that up a little bit and I come back into my top view and I draw let's say another circle a little bit smaller like that once again stopping and not closing them off um, you can see that it's been lifted up here move my cursor up again and draw another circle and let's go ahead and just do a couple more and although it looks like I'm drawing right on top of the same one, I'm really not. Oops, I used my um, my draw instead of just left mouse click. Okay, and then come back over here and we'll draw a little bit of a smaller, a smaller one. Okay, so as you can see, this is what I've got. I've just got a stack of rings and, of course, identical. I guess I could have used this window up here instead of the side one, but that's all right. Add surface, and I have this. What Blender does is if you if you get your ends close enough to you know touching, Blender kind of knows that you want them to connect, so it does go ahead and uh, connect it for you by default, and that is due to this choice here, automatic join. Automatic join tells Blender, okay, well, these were kind of close, put them together for me. If you uncheck that um, beforehand, you won't get these to close. If you didn't undo this beforehand, you can come down here into the operators panel, click on that, and it will unjoin them. And you can see there that we have the gap that we had when we drew our circles. You can, of course, increase the uh, follow on here. You can increase the cross, and it will give you a rounder shape, more curvy. Um, your automatic join is also kind of cool as well. Clicking on that, you'll see that you instantly get this stretch bar here. Now, the stretch bar, from beginning to end, tells Blender how much of your circle to your uh, seam to actually close off. So if we increase that, it closes all of it. 
if you decrease it, it begins to open it little by little. And it is in, it's closing them off in the order of the closest ones together and their, their, their neighboring ones. So sometimes this works to your advantage and sometimes you know you have to play around with it a little bit to get what you want, but you can open and close that. So that's how you can do circles and how you can do flat pieces to kind of get um, your three-dimensional um, shapes going. All right, so let me go back into front view. I'm gonna border select all of this <clears throat> and delete it. And one second. All right, we're gonna do one more, just a tiny bit more complicated. So let me close this window up here. Oops, click join. Oh, I can't do that one yet, okay. So in this window, again, center my cursor because I want to know exactly where it's at and where I'm drawing from. I'm going to be drawing in front view, and I'm going to change my view a little bit as we go along. And I am going to, um, let's see, I'll go ahead and reopen this even though I closed it. And this one is going to be a uh, top view. So I hit 7, and now I'm looking at it from the top. So my first circle, I want to draw as far away from me, of course, as this is. Well, you know where that one is because of, let me think for a second, am I doing this right? Mm, yeah, this is good. Okay, so let me push this up just a little bit here. Okay, so my first circle, I'm gonna go ahead and draw right where the, everything is by default. So here's my one circle. And now I'm going to use my cursor and I'm going to pull it closer to myself. And I will draw another circle. Moving the cursor to myself again or closer to me. I will draw my third circle. Now I'm still going to put my cursor according to uh, the top view here, but I'm going to change the angle of this uh, scene here. So if I hit number six to three times, actually, I'm gonna hit the number four three times, and I'm going to move <coughs> my cursor way down here, okay? Uh, this much closer to me. And I will draw another circle. Whoops. Here. So, let's see right there, I think it's good. Hmm, no. That did not work out. Okay, so sorry about that. I got a little um, turned around. So, with my first three lines drawn, of course, I moved each one closer to me. Uh, I'll move my cursor a little further in front, and I'm going to angle this. So, instead of it facing me uh, straight on, I'm going to turn the scene about 45 degrees towards, its, uh, towards the left here. So, I'll hit number six on my number pad three times. So, one, two three and that gives me an angle from the front and now if I draw a circle here where the cursor is so my D and draw my circle you can see that here it is at an angle so now I'll turn this uh, with the number six three more times so now I'm totally looking into the side and I'm gonna move my cursor here now I'm drawing it looking at it this way so my uh, D and draw a circle. See how that's working? Click there, D and another circle. Click here and I'll just do one last one. All right, so now this is what I have. I have almost like an L shape of circles and when I add surface to them, and I have automatic join off, so add surface. 
there you can go. I go. I kind of got like a tube. And again, clicking on automatic join in the window will join them. They are all connected, so I don't need to adjust that number at all. And increasing my follow once more will, of course, follow the lines that I've drawn a little more closely. And giving it some cross will smooth out the roundness. The only thing that does happen is that the stretch changes for the automatic joint. So here you would just come down here and just increase that a little bit. Increasing it all the way up isn't going to do any harm. You could even do that to keep it from pulling apart if you were to adjust these numbers any further. Okay, so that's it for making these into more 3D shapes. Um, the next tutorial will be um, actually how to edit these lines after you've drawn them, uh, turning them into curves, um, duplicating them, and even um, using some circle curves uh, that Blender already has for us um, with B surfaces. So, happy practicing until the next one, and thanks for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe and uh, leave comments if you want to. Thank you.